Hey, so you got yourself a camera, you got yourself some lenses, and now you're wondering, what do I have to buy in order to get my photography to the next level? Well, a tripod is one of those things that you must have if you want to be a good photographer. Whether you own one or you're in the marketplace to buy one, I'm going to give you the features and benefits of the tripods that I currently own, which run from this big, gigantic, over six foot tall tripod down to these little tabletops, and the video's gonna start right now. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Sean Seymour and it's about a day or two after I filmed this video for the first time. It's all about tripods. It's all about the features to look for in tripods. But one of the things happened to me that hasn't happened before is this got really long. So I cut and I cut and I cut and what I realized is I couldn't cut anymore without taking information away that someone who hasn't purchased a tripod or doesn't use tripods a lot might want. So for those of you that are just interested in some specific stuff, I went ahead and I created chapters and timestamps. So the way chapters works, there's a red bar down below where you have a red circle and a red bar that you can forward the video. There's little hash marks in there that you can forward to if you're interested in those subjects. Also in the description below, I put some active links so you can just click on where you wanna go in the video to listen to the topic that I'm talking about. So hopefully that helps people that have tripod experience already own a tripod, but they just wanna know a couple of things about it. And for those of you that don't have any experience with tripods, I highly recommend that you don't skip because I infuse a lot of my experience with the features that I'm talking about in the video. Hopefully you find this helpful without any more delay. Let's just go ahead and get started. California, and in this video, I'm going to give you the features and benefits of tripods and what you should be looking for when you go out to purchase one. If you've already owned one in the past, then you know that it's a necessary piece of equipment. If you don't have one yet, you're probably wondering, should I buy one? How much money should I spend? So a tripod is necessary in photography. You may as well just get it out of your mind that you're not gonna have one because there are certain photos that you literally can't take without a tripod. It's impossible to hand hold something and get the same stability that you can get from a tripod. Oddly enough, tripods seem to be an area where photographers like to flex their coolness. Once you get the expensive camera and you got the expensive lenses, if you're not running around with a carbon fiber tripod that does all the A to Z knickknack stuff, then you're not cool. Well, that's not actually true. As a professional photographer, I can tell you that what the pros do is based on experience, they use what works. And if that's some ugly mug looking tripod like what I've got in the back there that's my workhorse everyday use tripod, then that's what we go to. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you the things that I look for in a tripod so that when you are looking at the features of other tripods without having used them, you can make some judgments of your own. To start off, I wanna mention that this video is going to be mostly about tripod legs. Legs, which means no hat. <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean no hat. What it means is no head. No ball head, no gear head, no video head, no head at all. The reason I'm only talking about tripod legs and not ball heads or gear heads or whatever is because you're gonna find that as you do more photography, you're gonna switch out the head on your tripod depending upon what the shot is. So I use my gear head for something different than I might use a ball head for something different that I might use a smaller ball head like this, which has a more universal mount to it than my gear head does. So that's why I suggest that you just focus in on figuring out first what legs you want and how those legs are going to fit a lot of the photography that you do. If you buy tripod combination, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that head matches exactly what you're looking for. In this video, we're gonna focus on the legs and not the heads. One thing about that advice is that with tabletop tripods, it's not always easy to find just the legs. Sometimes you have to buy the head width. So just know that you're gonna end up with a, maybe a couple extra heads uh, when you're buying tabletop legs. I want to let you know that this video is not sponsored by anyone. I purchased all of this gear with my own money 
and there is not a single sponsor in this video. One of the questions that you want to ask yourself is what are you going to use this tripod for? Are you going to be shooting pictures in the studio? Are you going to be taking pictures on location? Are you going to be out doing nighttime photography? Are you going to be doing a traveling? Are you going to be doing YouTube? How are you going to use this tripod? That would be the first thing to ask yourself because a lot of times the tripod that you pick is going to be really good in one area but not so good in other areas. Take a look at how you shoot and what you think you're going to do with the tripod and then use this video to get a gauge of what's gonna work well for you and what won't. One of the questions you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is what height of tripod do you want? If I look at this one here, it looks really small when it's in the background but when I put it up next to me, this head right here is actually taller than I am and I'm about 6'2". Do you need a tripod that is this tall? Probably not. Let's pick a basic travel tripod. One of the things about travel tripods is that they probably need to fit in your luggage. And most luggage, at least carry-ons, are only gonna be 21 inches long. So if your tripod is longer than 21 inches, you're out of luck for sticking it in your bag. When I look at a travel tripod and I'm reviewing the height, I want to make sure Let's say I'm going to shoot landscape. I want to be sure. <laughs> oh my God, it's like a puzzle. If I'm shooting landscape, I want to make sure that this tripod is at least going to get as high up as, as I am. Okay, you don't shoot landscape from two feet off the ground unless it's a very specialized shot. Usually landscape is shot at roughly about chest height eye height, depending on how tall you are. So if I'm using a travel tripod, I don't want it to be something that while it fits in my bag, because my bag is 21 inches long, it doesn't extend high enough for me to actually use it. This one just barely meets the criteria for me. The other thing to check on height is as you go up, you're also going to get more unstable. So this one is rock solid. This one is not. This one, once you get it extended out, kind of wiggles around a little bit. If I'm doing some star trail shots or I'm doing something that requires my shutter to be open for quite a while, a tripod that wiggles around is really not gonna work very well. A lot of travel tripods are not set to go up to their maximum height and be stable. Even though they do go to that height, doesn't necessarily mean that's a good working height. And then you try to stick something like this on top of something like this, and you can expect that there's gonna be quite a bit of jiggling. On top of that, I don't know that I would really feel comfortable. I don't know what this is anymore, but it's probably $4,000 worth of gear on top of my tripod that I brought with me in my bag. Now here's another thing about height. I personally don't use this when I'm traveling because I don't need it. I carry with me tabletops and I have an extension tube for my tabletop which works great for me. So I don't use a travel tripod in the same sense that most people might. So ask yourself what height do you need for the shooting style that you're gonna do when you're out looking for a tripod. So as you work out the need for different heights, think about what kind of photography you like to do. Landscape photography a lot of times is shot at chest level or eye level. Portrait photography is usually shot just below eye level. I shoot a lot of sports teams. I shoot them at probably four to four and a half feet off the ground. So that tripod that I'm using has to do that very easily. And then if you're doing YouTube or you wanna run around as a selfie stick or whatever, you need to have a tripod that is lightweight and gets that height when you put it on a table to do your YouTube video. So ask yourself what height do you think is gonna work for you for the style of photography that you're shooting. Let's talk about legs. I don't know how that even popped in my mind. A little salt and pepper. Let's talk about legs. First thing you wanna ask yourself about legs is is how many sections do you want? As you can probably imagine, each section can't go any smaller than its actual physical length. So in other words, if I have a section right here that's one foot, I can't get this thing any smaller than one foot. There's no physical way I can do that. So sections allow you to have a tripod like this that is a smaller tripod, but when I open up, and I'm just gonna open up the one leg, so I quite frankly find this thing a pain in the butt to work with, but, but now you see I've got this is why I don't like this tripod because you really have to crank on these things to get it to stay. Okay, so five sections. When you get more sections, you're gonna have a lot more turning, a lot more setup. You're gonna have a lot more where you can be off level. If everything isn't tight, uh, you have to ask yourself, okay, what went wrong? <laughs> 
and figure it out, right? If that's not a big deal, if you're just shooting landscape and you have all the time in the day and it's not a big problem. If you're shooting with a bunch of people standing there looking at you while you're futzing around with your gear, you might want to consider not having four times three that I'm going to have 12 tensioning devices that I have to make sure are tightened. And if there's people standing there watching me set it up and I'm struggling with it, it kind of adds to the anxiety of your shoot. Take into consideration exactly what you're doing and ask yourself how many sections you really need in your tripod and it's not me smoking it's all of California Oregon and I don't know where else is on fire right now but it literally is hitting me okay after you ask yourself the number of sections then ask yourself about the tensioning device and I call it a tensioning device because there is a ton of different ways of doing this this one right here is just a screwed uh, system as you screw it up and down it loosens a wiper inside sometimes this is nice because that wiper actually keeps material from sneaking in and getting into mechanism of your tripod if you look at something like this this is a very basic just lever that is also a tensioning lever. As I open it up, you'll see this crack right here. That loosens and then the leg can come out. This is a really inexpensive way of doing it. And frankly, I don't like it at all because you have just as much trouble working these darn levers as you do the twisties, but they don't have any wipers usually. This whole thing is open. So there's nothing there to protect the leg from sand or grit or dirt or whatever. So if you took a tripod like this to the beach and you're shooting some shots, uh, if you're anywhere near the beach, you're gonna have salt water build up inside of your legs here and you're also gonna have sand in there and you're gonna ask yourself how'd that get in there then you're gonna try and clean it and that's all kinds of fun so take a look at the tensioning device let me show you the tensioning device on this big boy this tensioning device is what I call the screw with a plate it literally is a screw right here and there's a plate inside that just smushes down on this tube one of the things I don't like about the screw and plate design is a lot of times there's a cap at the end and if you pull too too hard that cap will pop off the tube of your leg will disappear it will just go away I don't really like this system this is more of a system that you're not going to adjust much and is going to be something that you're going to essentially set it and forget it so that's a screw and plate Last one that I want to talk about, frankly, is my my dream tripod. It's just simply a tensioning system that has a lever that you push and the legs automatically come out. So it works something like this, where I push the lever and the legs pop out and I'm done. I don't have to do anything else. It's already set. All I have to do is spread the legs to wherever I want them and I'm done. I personally use this all the time because in the studio, on location, whatever, it weighs as much as a tank and that system is part of the reason it weighs so much but for me that weight has some benefits which I'll talk about here in a minute and it makes it super fast to set up so I'm not futzing around with my tripod trying to get it ready put a camera on it get my camera ready do all those other things I have to do to shoot last thing I want to do is mess with legs on my tripod and the tensioning part of that getting it level and making sure they're tight enough that they're not gonna slip that's probably the least fun on a shoot is when you've been doing some shots and one of your legs on your tripod slips the other question to ask yourself about legs is can the legs spread and how do they spread? There are many tripods that have legs that can get very, very close to the ground. In a travel tripod like this, they use this mechanism here where you just spin these latches and the legs spread out even wider. And this is where my suggestion to look at how you want to shoot and what kind of stuff you want to do, this is where my suggestion comes into play. With things like that tripod in the background used for video, those legs don't spread at all. They are set. They will not go any wider or narrower than they, than they do every single time you deploy it. These legs on something like this, I can pop this little latch and this leg will actually reverse and go straight up and down if I want it to. If I want to lock it in, and use it close to the ground. I pull these out and I do something like that. Then all I have to contend with is the center column. I do not like this tripod. <laughs> this would be a great example of a tripod that I bought and then immediately went right into the gear pile. Got a lot of features, but none of them are very practical for me. Here's another example of legs being, sp <laughs> 
It just sounds so bad. Here's another example of a tabletop tripod that has legs that spread. I just simply click these little latches on the side and then the tabletop tripod will get very low because the legs will spread out. So that's a nice feature to look for. Now here's a kind of unique way of doing legs. This is meant to be a selfie stick. It's meant to be a tripod and it's meant to just be handheld. There's a locking mechanism down at the bottom here and the legs pull down like this and then I lock that locking mechanism and then the legs come up like that and it's nice and stable. These legs don't actually spread any further than this and they don't offer a different platform than that. But if I want the legs to go all the way down and use it as a selfie stick, that's all I have to do. Put the legs down and I hold on to it as a selfie stick. Kind of cool. Again, ask yourself why and what you need a tripod to do and that will answer a lot of these questions for you. One more example of legs. This is another tabletop tripod. These legs are designed to just fold out and lay flat like that. This is more of a handle than it is meant to be a tripod, but it works great as a tripod. As long as you don't need any adjustability in the height or adjustability in the leg width, you can see that, that spreads out pretty good, but it's really meant for holding and being a selfie stick or for holding and filming. So here I'm showing you my workhorse and how the legs on my workhorse spread out to any height that I want. This is one of the reasons that I really like this tripod and one of the reasons that I continue to use it even though this particular tripod I'm going to guess is at least 25 years old. I found it on Craigslist and I'm looking for another one on Craigslist so if for some reason you come out of this video thinking "Ooh, I gotta get me one of those don't do it till I get mine. I need two of them. <laughs> You're never gonna believe this, but I forgot to mention my favorite tripod of all. When I'm on location, I'm doing shoots. You know it. Look at that tripod. <laughs> you know what that is? That's a chair. It's a chair. It's an awesome chair. Something to think about when you're talking about spreading the legs out is what do the feet on the bottom of the tripod look like? On this particular tabletop, they have the rubberized surface going all the way around the bottom. So when you spread the leg out like this, it's still sitting on the rubberized surface. There is a difference. In my workhorse, it has a spike in the middle here, but it also has rubber. So let's say I'm working on a gym floor. I don't want the spikes to be out. I want the rubber to be out. But when I spread the legs out like that, I still want the tripod to sit on the rubber feet. I don't want the tripod to be sitting on the leg or somehow resting on the center column or something like that. So look for tripods that once you spread the legs out, the foot on the bottom is still able to touch the ground and that it's not resting on any other part of the tripod. There's a ton of different feet out there. Make sure the tripod you are buying has the feet that you think you're gonna need. The places that you're gonna use spiked feet is more outdoors, especially when it's cold out or it's snowing or icy. Those spikes work really, really well. However, the spikes can also work against you if you forget to put them back in and suddenly you're walking into a client's office that has this beautiful flooring and you've got your spike sticking out. Or you're in a house taking a picture and you've got a spike sticking out of the bottom. If you go for a tripod that has spikes on the bottom, make sure you're getting them for a reason because sometimes they like to sneak out, kind of like teenagers. <laughs> Most tripods have a center column. What the center column does is typically it allows the tripod to extend the height. Center columns come in all shapes, sizes, and performance. Some of them are geared. Usually your geared center columns are gonna be able to take a lot more weight and they're gonna be much, much more stable. Then there's the type like this that have the twist system with a little wiper inside that grabs. There's also center columns that just simply have a screw on the side and then the column goes up or down. These are just friction based. The screw just pushes on a plate and it causes it to stick in place. Usually they're pretty good. And by the way, the more you extend this center column, the less stable it becomes. Here's a variation of the center column which I frankly don't like but some people love and it is the center column that then can cantilever over let's see if I can do this can cantilever over so that you can get closer to the ground or you can shoot over the top of something directly. I'm not a big fan of this because this cantilevers your camera and all the weight of your camera out away from the center of gravity. As soon as you take and you put a camera out here and you start extending this past the legs, you're cantilevered out away from the center of gravity. So you better have something on this end that's offsetting that weight or you better have a sandbag or something hanging under, underneath that creates more mass so that you don't tilt over and crash. These can be very useful though if you want to get down close to the ground, you push the buttons, pull the legs out, and now I'm not limited by my center column for my height. Okay, so this one literally lays 
flat. If you can see this, it literally lays flat so that I can get my camera right on the ground. And then you tighten this down and everything stops moving. You and me, pal, there's no one else here. Ah, oh, there we go. See what I mean? You don't wanna be on a shoot struggling with your gear. Why do you think you would want to add weight to your tripod? Hmm? That's a great question. Hey Sean, I just spent $500 on this beautiful carbon fiber awesome tripod. Why would I want to add weight to this tripod that is marketed as a lightweight tripod? The reason why is because the more mass that you have, the harder it is to move. So if I'm shooting star streams, I need this tripod to never move. No matter whether I have a 20 mile an hour wind blowing at me or not, I need it to stay still and never move. So another thing to consider about a tripod is whether or not you have anywhere to add weight. And by adding weight, usually there's a hook. For example, on this tripod with the hybrid center column, there's a little hook area right here for me to hook a bag or hook something on there. There's also a little hook area over here where I can hook something to that. The reason that you might do that is because you need to add mass. On this particular travel tripod, it's really lightweight, it's nice and short, fits in my bag, but has absolutely nowhere that I can conveniently hook any weight. So when this thing is fully extended and I need it to stay steady, I'm gonna be challenged with how I'm gonna keep this thing from moving around in the wind. Remember I mentioned that this one has a lot of features? Well, one of the features that they do have is down here at the bottom, they have a little hook. And that hook allows you to add weight. On my workhorse, I can add weight. It has multiple places on that tripod in order to be able to add weight. Now, how do you add weight? You could add a sandbag. If you're hiking though, and you're you're going in the back country, are you gonna take a sandbag with you? Probably not. But your backpack works as weight. Anything you can do to add mass to your tripod will make your tripod more steady and will keep it from moving around. Accessory ports and inserts. And what do I mean by this? In most professional grade tripods, you're going to find that they have a quarter inch or three eighths inch holes that you can add things to. Here's what I've done on my workhorse. I actually put a three eighths inch bolt in this hole so that I had the head of the bolt sticking out. My tripod's aluminum, so there was nothing that a magnet could grab onto. I don't want to accidentally push the button and move the camera. So I use a wired release and the wired release doesn't hook anywhere very conveniently. So I went ahead and I JB welded a magnet on the back of my release and then I used that bolt head as a place to put my wired release when I'm not using it. Even on these small tabletop tripods, you're gonna find that there'll be female threads. You're gonna find places where you can attach extra accessories. I have a feeling that their thought behind this was to allow you to add a light or a microphone, I guess. Take that into consideration because you'll see it on a lot of professional grade tripods and you'll see it on these tabletops. But if it's something that you think you're gonna need or want, make sure it's included in the features when you're looking at the tripod legs that you wanna get. Hey, well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're out there looking to buy tripods, hopefully this features and benefits view gave you something to work with. If you own a tripod and you're trying to figure out, do I really need, do I need, do I need? Now you know. Hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notifications down below. And until I see you on the next video, buy lots of gear, use lots of tripods, be stable, and keep it simple. <laughs> oh, look at these guns. Whoops. Let's talk about tribal, tri <laughs> tribal tripods. Where did I come up with tribal tripods? Tribal tripods. Yes, <laughs> my new brand name. Check out my new tribal tripod. That's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> Without further delay, let's get started, shall we? Yeah. Now this is what a hat looks like when it's on backwards. I'm done.